Hello, welcome to episode 9 of my 009 build. Have you ever used a static grass applicator? Well, this is my first time. Come have a look. On today's video, I'm going to do the job I've been avoiding for some time. Ballasting. To make sure that the ballast doesn't fall through any of the holes and gaps on the layout, I've gone around with decorator's cork, and once that's dry, I'm going to touch it up with a bit of paint. I'm not going to show you how to ballast because there are hundreds of videos on YouTube, and my method is probably no different to many of the other methods out there. However, I will show you my progress. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to do a video on how to ballast, uh, which I'm not. Just going to go over and show you what I've done so far. So I've just done this small area here. Patched the ballast round and left it for the decking of the bridge so we can still see the uh, woodwork underneath. Uh, and putting it down there as well. So I'm just working over by this tunnel portal. I'm just going to do the uh, simple easier areas before we move into point work. Uh, now as the track is floating in midair, I've got a bit of cork underneath there now otherwise I'm just going to be filling that gap with ballast. And then I use masking tape around the edges just to sort of give a guide of how far to bring the ballast out. And then it gives it a nice clean edge, as you can see around here. Nothing uh, too special. It's the usual method. Uh, use a mixture of um, IPA and water to mist over the ballast once it's been applied and then just uh, a dropper with uh, half and half PVA glue to water with a bit of washing up liquid in there. So the ballast is now laid all around the layout except in one area. And that's over here in the sidings, where I've got a bit of work to do. Whilst I've ballasted the main part of the layout, all around here, uh, I still haven't done the sidings. And whilst I'm also still trying to decide what this actual area is for, although I think I've narrowed it down to either um, a granite pit or maybe uh, a sort of the edge of a forestry area, so uh, it's where lumber is loaded up in these sidings, I need to sort out the issue of the floating track here and here. So to do that, before I uh, move on to ballasting the sidings, I'm gonna build some supports to hold the track up so then I've got two equal length sidings. Right then, I've been away and I've built uh, two small piers to hold the floating track. So I've got this one installed here, and I just need a little bit of weathering. And then I've made this other one, which is slightly bigger. And that is going to go underneath here to hold up this bit of drag. I'm just waiting for the wood to, uh, sorry, the glue to dry before I weather the wood. And then I'll try not to throw it everywhere. Um, so as you see, I've just sort of, it's a matchstick frame. Uh, this uh, the supports are just a lollipop stick cut in half, which someone recommended on Instagram to use, uh, and they are quite effective. And then the top decks are the offcuts from when I lowered the station. So they're quite useful as well. So as I say, wait for the glue to dry. I'm gonna weather this and then I'm gonna install it underneath. Using my six favorite shades from the Life Color paint range, I weathered the piers in the same method I'd done in previous videos. Nothing special, nothing different, just a case of blending the six different colors to give the effect of worn, tired wood. I also gave the Pico buffer stops the same treatment. Right, uh, here's the piers, all nicely weathered. I've let them dry, got both of them here. And then as I painted the uh, buffer stops and I've put them on already. So, just need to slide these under here and we'll just put a bit of Yuhu contact adhesive on the bottom of the supports just to glue them to the scenery although rather it didn't splurge glue everywhere and hopefully that'll hold it in place and then when I put the rest of the scenic elements on that should then finish the job the downside of this stuff is a bit stringy 
Yeah, let's put a little bit on there and just gently work it back into the scenery. There we go. That's one. Nudge that back in a little bit. There. And that's the supports for the sidings in. Right, next I need to uh, Balance the sidings. So with the supports in place and the buffers just dry nicely, I'm gonna add, and I think this is Gauge Master ballast. Now I'm not sure it's been tipped in a tub and the label thrown away. Um, but I suspect it's Gauge Master. It's very fine. Um, it's almost like sand, including it's got a bit of shininess to it, which uh, is probably why I haven't used it very often before, but I'm gonna use it here and weather it and hope that'll take the shine away. But I just wanted something uh, not as, um, I suppose, refined as the ballast. So the ballast should look a little bit cleaner and the sidings are just whatever the railways had lying around just to dump on the ground and um, put their sidings on. So with that, I'm just gonna start applying this ballast. And once again, I'm not gonna talk you really through it because there's plenty of ballast videos out there um, and I'm sure my method is the same as most other people's. Uh, the only tip I've got is to use a bit of sponge to tamp it. Because that seems to be quite good to get in the uh, stones off the sleepers. And then the other stones you do have in the sleepers, if you just tap the rail... seem to get the stones off as well so you get nice tidy sleepers so i'm gonna get on with this and come back to you when it's done well i've talked about it for a long time in many videos kept hinting that one day i would get there but i do believe i am now finally at a stage where i can start adding the scenics so as you can see i have ballasted it's all down it's dry pretty much i've done this earlier um it's dry quite quickly i think there's a few little wet patches but otherwise the rest of it's dry and I've gone over I've cleaned the rail um, so I think I'm now ready to move on to the scenery and I'm going to start with um, detailing around the station and put some fencing up around the back uh, I bought some dry wall uh, that I might put in the front here I need to put um, a ground frame lever here as well so plenty to get on with uh, and I'm quite excited because I've been waiting to do this bit for a long time yeah, can move on to the scenery. Okay, so the first job I said I was going to do was the fence for the station. And I'm going to use um, some ratio GWR station fencing. I had a whole brand new pack. I was going to open it. And then I remembered that I had salvaged the same type of fencing from my N-gauge layout. Uh, you can see it's in a uh, sort of aluminium silvery colour. This was so it would look like galvanised um, security fencing. It's worked quite well in um, Engage. It was convincing enough. Well, I thought it was anyway. Uh, so it's already been pre-painted. So I just need to obviously get rid of the uh, shiny silveriness. So I'm just going to dull this down and give the fence uh, a weathered look much like the rest of the station. <laughs> So I weathered the uh, fence and I decided I was going to paint it uh, green to match the fascia boards, etc. of the station. 
Uh, I tried using a sort of uh, just dabbing it on with a sponge and try and give it a peeled look, and then mixing a little bit of white into the green to give it a bit of faded look. It kind of works okay, but I wasn't satisfied with it, so I decided to use the um, the uh, AK acrylic fluid worn effects, and so I just coated the other fences in uh, that. So the larger fence, I also uh, cut uh, an extra piece out and glued it on the side, and then put the worn effects fluid on top, and then before I just leave it next to the heater for a couple of seconds just to dry it, and got distracted. So. Uh, that fence needs uh, replacing. Okay, uh, I've painted and weathered the fence now. As you can see, it's uh, sort of got that rundown look. And I've started attaching it to the layout. So I've just taken um, pin vise with a drill and just made holes where some of the posts go. Now, obviously, I can't do that on the bridge because that's going to ruin the uh, appearance. So. For the bridge, I've just cut it, the posts down so it will sit on top. And I'm just going to use a little bit of Yoohoo glue just to hold it in place. So here I go. Here we are, that's the fence in place. Nice, quick, easy job. And uh, the layout is starting to take shape now. Right, well, one of the things I've been looking forward to doing on this layout for some time now, and it must be almost the four month mark, because um, I bought this back in October at the Great British Model Railway Show in Gaydon at the Motor Museum. Uh, it seemed like a decent piece of equipment, uh, fairly priced, because uh, let's face it, uh, static grass applicators are not cheap. Um, however, I bit the bullet and I really wanted to have a go. And I've been patiently waiting for this layout to get to a stage where I can do it. So I filled up the chamber with a little bit of Pico um, static grass. This is patchy grass. So for this layout, I'm going to go for um, late summer, early autumn sort of look. Uh, that's why I've sort of been having these yellow trees over this corner here. That's kind of the idea of what I want. So the yellow and reds of the trees and sort of the patchy grass to sort of contrast with the slate rock face. Uh, I think it looked really nice. I've seen lots of photos of like when they've, um, the Festival Railways had uh, steam galas in the autumn and the photos look fantastic. So I think um, having a layout that looks like that will look pretty good as well. So first things first, uh, according to the instructions that came with this, I need to apply some of this glue, uh, put it on the surface, uh, and uh, earth my uh, static grass machine, and then just have a go at adding the fibers and see what happens. Let's have a time lapse. Right, here's my first attempt. Um, it's not quite as stand up as I expected. It is in places. It's a little flat in other places. Uh, I did a little patch over by the signal box as well. I just laid it on a bit thicker here. It's not too bad, but I think it needs a little bit more work. Probably another coat, maybe a blend of a different colour. Uh, we'll see how I get on. So I uh, went back over the grass with some of the, uh, I believe, believe oh, apologies, I'm not even filming the right bit here. Uh, the Grassmaster Static Grass uh, Summer Green Long. And it's definitely standing up. But what I've stupidly done is I, I tried going over it by putting patches of glue on top of the previous application and that was just dumb. Because all I'm going to get is these great big horrible glue patches in here now. So, uh, yeah, I also tried using um, spray glue. But that just bubbled up like this. It was even worse. So, uh, I'm going to now try and hide this and rectify it with a bit of blended turf. 
and uh, hopefully that will make that horrible mess go away. But otherwise, um, you know, I'm learning with the static grass. I've never done it before. I'm sure I'll work out the method, hopefully earlier rather than later. But uh, we'll see how I get on. And here we are with the flock applied. Uh, I'm hoping that that will now rectify the horrendous glue blobs I put over the top. I'm obviously just going to have to look into uh, applicating static grass a little more, getting a better understanding of it. Um, I used the scenic glue over here, but I ended up sort of masking taping everything. And it still wasn't enough because the scenic glue went all over the roof, all over the level crossing. So I was a bit concerned I was going to have bits of grass sticking up in areas I didn't want it. Um, but I just put a little light dusting over the long summer grass and a very small amount of flock. And I think this patch has come out quite nicely as well. So there we are, as I say, it's a learning process. This is certainly not a how-to, um, although it could be a how not to do it, I suppose. Um, but there we are. Start to look like a railway. Right, that's the grass is dried out now. And I think I have saved that. Doesn't look too bad. Same with the patch over here. This is definitely a learning curve for me. I never really get this far with layouts to do scenery. So I'm just going to do small sections at a time and uh, kind of work out what I'm doing. So I've just been looking at photos of uh, rivers in North Wales, just trying to get an idea of what to do this area here. Now I'm just going to try and just sort of do this patch, a few bits of sort of fallen rocks and some other plants and grasses on there to go down to the edge of the river. So I'm going to give this a go. Okay, well, um, it's definitely a learning process for me, doing uh, the scenery. I haven't done any in a long time, uh, especially in OO scale. Uh, but I think I've cracked the grass. So I've been using uh, a mix of, is it, is it Jarvis? Or Javis? Must be Jarvis. Jarvis Autumn Scatter Static Grass which uh, has come out with a really nice colour. And then I've just uh, sprinkled on a little bit of um, wooden scenic sort of olive turf. Uh, and that's come out with a nice effect. So I think I'm just gonna go right across the river valley now and just do the same, except on the top where I've done the original, uh, I've got Pico Autumn Scenic Scatter. So that one there, and then the longer grass on the top. So I think if I do that there, then go over, as I have done here with this, uh, the Jarvis stuff and then the I think that looked quite good. So I'm gonna carry on with that. Right then, here we are with the uh, Pico 2 mil Autumn Static Grass and then a little bit of the Green Scenes Summer Long added to it. Uh, I've put a bit around the embankment on the sort of flatter areas where grass is more likely to grow and then just left the uh, slate uh, sort of rock face exposed. I've done a little bit this side and then uh, I'm going to do the same as what I've done over here. I'm just going to let it dry and then I'm going to go over with the Jarvis Autumn Scatter uh, static grass and the uh, woodland scenics olive turf. Uh, I think that should come out all right. Okay, well, right. well I've uh, done the uh, top level of uh, the grass with the Pico static and the green scenes 
so now I'm going to take the uh, Jarvis uh, Countryside Scenics Autumn Static Grass, a bit of a mouthful there. Uh, I'm just going to go down the bank and over the top of this and then add the Woodland Scenics Olive Flock. Here we are then, I've gone through the uh, river valley uh, with the static grass uh, using a mixture of the blends I showed you earlier. And I've just gone through, I've left pieces of the rock face exposed. A little play with wood and the scenic purple flowers. You can see there's a little growing there. And then some more down this meadow area here, sort of on the floodplain. Uh, yeah, so I've gone around the bottom, there is Static grass everywhere, even though I've used the vacuum to uh, try and keep it clean. It's a very messy job. But I think that's turned out all right. So I think now I'm just going to concentrate on a few more scenic details around this area. One of the first jobs I wanted to do on the layout was some fence posts around the front. First thing to do was to prime the posts. These are Slater's wooden fence posts that have four holes in them so you can thread some wire through. I then painted with my usual choice of life colour weathered wood paints. Once painted I installed the posts on the layout at 2cm intervals. I then threaded the wire through and used super glue to hold the wires in place. And this is the finished result. Well, I think we'll uh, draw that to a conclusion for now. Obviously, I've got a lot more scenery to do. And uh, you can see it next time when I'll be doing things like this. Next time I make some bushes. Plant some bushes. and grow some grass. Well, thanks for watching if you've got this far. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like. If you've really enjoyed it and you haven't already, then please subscribe. It is free, won't cost you a penny. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now.